Instagram dead for photographers? Well, not if you ask me. Just last week, I posted a simple photo and it got me well over 10,000 likes and a few hundred new followers. You can't really call that dead, can you? So that's why I want to share with you my most successful growth strategies for photographers and also share with you how I have grown my own personal account to almost 200,000 followers and two other accounts to almost 800,000 followers combined. And I also want to share with you my lame strategy. It's a little bit lame, but it basically guarantees you growth for your own account. So make sure to watch till the end to find out all about that strategy and how you can use it to grow your own account. Will you have to post reels as a photographer if you want to continuously grow on Instagram in this current environment? Yes. But don't be afraid. I will show you a few cool ideas how you can make videos and reels as a photographer, even if you don't have any video content at all. And I also want to share with you my most successful reel that I made in under 10 minutes that got almost 8 million views and got me 15,000 new followers in just a week. Pretty cool, hey? So let's jump right in. No doubt it has been much harder to be a photographer on Instagram lately and get your work out there and get it seen by people. None of us is getting the same engagement that we used to get. I used to get a few thousand followers a week and that's down to almost zero sometimes. So I can feel your pain, but I think it's important that you don't get discouraged because Instagram is still one of the most important tools for photographers who want to get their work seen. For me personally, Instagram has opened a lot of doors. It got me on TV, it has shown my photos to hundreds of millions of people and made me a decent chunk of money. So that's why I still stick with Instagram, put in a few hours a week. So I still grow and maintain that account because I just think it's still an important tool. There might be better app down the track, but at this current moment in time, I still think Instagram is the number one for photographers. I think essentially Instagram has actually replaced personal photography websites. Because if I hear about a new name, a new photographer, I usually go and check out if they have an Instagram account. So how can you actually get out there and grow your account? My first tip almost seems too obvious to mention, but you do need great and unique content if you want to grow your account on Instagram. If you post the same as everyone else, it's likely that it will just get lost with a lot of the rest of the images because they all look kind of similar. So find something that makes your images unique. It could be a different style, it could be cropping, editing, certain birds you're photographing. There's endless ways of making your images look unique or finding new content. For instance, for me, I heard about these tame fairy wrens that would eat little worms from your hand. So when I heard that, I quickly organized to go there and got myself some really cool videos that have gotten me tens of thousands of followers after posting them on Instagram. The other thing I would recommend is that you make sure to edit your images really nicely. If you don't edit your images, they will just look a little bit dull and will just get lost because there's so many images on Instagram. So you have to do something to your images to make them stand out. And that's why my masterclass can come in because I show you exactly how you can edit your bird images so they look absolutely amazing and stand out from the crowd. If you're interested in that, make sure to check it down there in the description. One of the best and easiest ways to grow on Instagram is actually to get these big image hubs or pages with millions and millions of followers to repost your images so they get seen by all their followers and usually you're getting a few hundred or a few thousand followers yourself from these reposts. But how can you actually get on these repost pages? Well, it actually brings me back to my very first point. You need great, unique and viral content. Because what do these pages want in the end? They want to repost your image and so it can help them grow. They're not really there to help you. They want to grow their own page. But in the process, they're helping you as well. So they are looking for content that's viral and that will help their page grow. So if you're having unique images, for instance, like my fairy ring videos or like a tied in the frame pink robin, they will pick that up. And once one big image hub will pick up your images, a lot of these other hubs will pick it up as well and it will spiral and spiral and spiral and you might get 
thousands and thousands of new followers because a lot of pages start reposting your images and they tag you in these images. There's another way to grow if you might not have the most unique content that will be picked up by pages that have millions of followers and that's to trade story shout outs with other accounts that are a similar size to you. You might have a few friends that have an Instagram account as well and it's very unlikely that you share the exact same followers. So what you can do is just trade story shout outs with other people say, hey, why don't you tag me in one story and get your followers to come to my account and I do the same for you. And I've done that in the past many, many times with a few friends and we've all managed to grow over time by just sharing these story shout outs and just basically exchanging followers a little bit. So that's something that you can do if you have a small account. Another thing that's important is cropping. When we are looking at Instagram, we're just using our phone with that little tiny screen. So to be seen, the best ratio is to have it in a four by five vertical ratio because it takes up the most screen space on everyone's phone. And if only your photo can be seen when people scroll through your feed, they are a lot more likely to engage with it. Whereas if you're posting like a small image, it's only gonna be like that small on people's screens and they might not even be able to see it. So they're very quickly scrolling past it. So cropping is a very important part in preparing the images on Instagram. And what you can do as well, and what I do for instance, I have a three by two version, but then for Instagram, I just crop in, have a four by five version because it usually gets me more engagement. The other option is as well, you can actually make more images out of the same image. For instance, this shot of these cool, awesome Major Mitchell cockatoos, I actually posted three times. I posted the image with the two birds, and then I posted two four by five crops of each individual bird. And each of those images got me many, many likes, many, many comments, great engagement, and many, many new followers. So I have just one photo, but it makes me three pieces of content. And so you can work with that with many of your photos. For instance, if a bird is relatively close, you could post a full body shot and then you can crop right in to the bird's head, get another photo out of it. So you can actually use existing content to create new content. Let's talk about hashtags for a little bit. It's one of those things everyone's like, oh my God, I need good hashtags. But from my experience, they don't mean that much in the end when it comes to growth. I use hashtags. I have a few sets of hashtags that are copy and rotate. And it's important that you don't use the same hashtags every day. But in the end, for growth, I didn't find hashtags to be super useful. And even if I have pictures that get hundreds of thousands of views through hashtags, this for some reason never usually translates into new followers. To get new followers, you really need to get onto the explore page. And from my experience, hashtags don't really get you there. They can help, they help you to get your work seen, but I wouldn't spend too much time on finding new hashtags or curating my hashtags. From my experience, when I tried, whether I post the same set, a different set, it almost does the same and it's just the luck of the draw. The only other suggestion I have, and this is especially for smaller accounts, if you're picking hashtags, make sure you're not picking hashtags that have like 5 million folders or 10 million folders because your content will never be seen. If you pick hashtags like the bird name, for instance, you might actually then get into the top nine that get shown when people search for that hashtag. And then on a small account, especially, you might actually be able to grow from the hashtags as well. So I would probably say if you're a small account, hashtags are a little bit more important, but for bigger accounts, hashtags really don't seem to have that much value at the moment, at least from my own personal experience. Do you have any other experience? Let me know in the comments. It's called social media for a reason. So what you actually have to do is engage with people when you're on Instagram. Don't just come on once a week, post one photo and then leave. Never reply to any of your comments or questions in your comments. Never like or comment on other people's photos. That's just not what gets you to where you want to be. What you want to do is be an active user and engage with other people. Follow other people, like their work, comment on their work, and just build your own little communities. It's actually quite fun to meet 
new people. I've met some fantastic new friends on Instagram, have some nice WhatsApp groups where we just talk about Instagram. So it's been a great experience overall for me and I got in contact with many new photographers and many people shared some amazing new spots with me. So all in all, engaging with other people is very important if you want to grow your account. And not just that, it's actually a nice way to connect with a lot more nice and like-minded people. Don't be shy, show yourself on your Instagram account. My personal account only really started to take off once I showed myself more, not necessarily in my image feed, but I did a lot of stories, I talked to my phone, I made stories, I engaged with people so people could actually see who's behind the account. If you're following an account, it's always interesting to see who's the photographer, what are they up to, isn't it? If you don't know who you're following at all, you might be less likely to stick around, whereas if there's a fun guy that does different things, takes me out with him into the field, it's a lot more engaging and a lot more interesting for people, isn't it? And this is why I think stories can come in and are a very important tool to definitely use, ideally on a daily basis, because they allow you to have content that you wouldn't post on your feed because it might not be the highest quality, but it's good enough to be shared with people. So just quick in the field videos and a lot of other content that I think is very important to share in your stories. And also in stories, you can do the swipe up links, but you have to have at least 10,000 followers for that to work. So that might be something to work towards to for you because you can link to your YouTube video, you can link to your website, you can link to a shop. So that's a very, very handy tool to have. For a long time, video content was actually the best way to grow on Instagram. But once they decided that TikTok was their main competitor now, they actually introduced the Reels. And now Reels is definitely the best way to grow if you still want to consistently grow on Instagram at the moment. So how do you get cool Reel content? I think it's important that you're not too afraid of the Reels. It doesn't have to be complicated at all. You don't have to do any silly dances in front of your phone or start singing, doing karaoke or whatever. No, you can actually use the content you already have. You may have already filmed some bird videos in the field or you've filmed yourself in the field, but even if you haven't, you could simply use a slideshow of your images, add some nice music and create a beautiful reel that might get a lot of views. You never know. So don't be shy. Some people I've seen done some nice videos that just film themselves with the camera in the field and then use some music and show some of the images. And that's actually pretty simple to do. And what I want to do now is show you how I quickly used the free program DaVinci Resolve to make some of my reels and how I actually made my most successful reel. So we're now in DaVinci Resolve after we've created a project and gave it a name. So the first thing we want to do is to go to our project settings and then find the right ratio. For the reels on Instagram or TikTok, we want to have a nine by 16 ratio. And then up here, you want to select the frame rate that your content is filmed in. For me, it's usually 25 frames per second. If you're in America or you're using like an iPhone, it's usually 30 frames per second. So now we need to get some clips into the program. What do we do? It's very easy. We can actually drag any folder that we want in here when we're on the editing tab. So I'm just put the test folder together. I can just drag that in there. I can drag our music in here. So I have my music, my photos, and some videos. Now I want to bring it down here onto my timeline. So what do I do? Usually I start with the music and put that here at the bottom. Now at the top, we can add a video of myself, for instance. And as you can see here now, because we're having this narrow nine by 16 ratio, we actually need to zoom in a lot to the video. And this is where it's important that you're shooting on like 4K because then you can zoom in more without losing too much quality. So what I do now, I just click on the clip and drag it onto the timeline. I don't need the sound of it so I can delete that. So what we want to do now is to zoom in a bit so we can actually fill out our frame for the reel. So I zoom in and then I move the clip over here on the transform column. And then I go through the clip, pick the right part. Oh, they're moving, that's good. So I'm just gonna go and press, while this clip is selected, Control B, delete it. And then that will be enough for our real Control B deleted. And then I just move it with my mouse onto the right position. 
Now I just want to have some of my JPEG showing, so I'm just going to drag them all onto the timeline. And if we hit space, we can play. Then each of these probably only this long, so we can either press Control B to cut them and then move this over, or you can just move these clips over just like that. Now what we have to do as well is zoom in to these clips so they can fill out our frame. And that one we have to move over again. This one we want to zoom in, keep the reflection. And our last one. And because it's boring if these photos don't move at all, you can click over here where it says dynamic zoom. And if you turn that on, you can see it's actually now moving your images. Do that for the next one, maybe swap it around so it actually zooms in. And if you click here and select dynamic zoom, you can actually click on the red corner and move that around a bit and decide where you want it to zoom from. So if we do that, we can see now it zooms to the bird. That's cool. This one zooms out and then this one it zooms out again. And just like that in what? two, three minutes, we've created a cool little reel that you could now take and post onto Instagram. Let me just show you how I quickly do that. I go down here, well first we just trim off clip here, we go to the deliver tab, and for Instagram, you can just do the custom one, give it a name, Insta, QuickTime is fine, H264 is fine, HD is fine, all fine, and we don't want to have this too high we could probably go 25,000, have a bit better quality. So then we click add to render queue, save it just on the desktop, press render all. And because this is a quick computer, this won't take long. Done. There's our reel we just made. Pretty cool, isn't it? So let me quickly just show you how I made the reel that got so many million views. Same idea really. I dragged all my clips of my Rufus Whistlers and Golden Whistlers into here. And then I just pick a clip, go on through it and see, oh yeah, there's a nice, nice scene the bird is doing a little call. So I just press Control B, zoop, and Control B. So I ended up with a lot of little snippets. And then I just put these snippets together and ended up with this really cool clip. So let me just show you one more thing quickly. Here, this is this tab where we can add some more colors and different looks to our images. And we can keep it really simple here. What I would do is use the shadows highlight slider, make it a bit darker, a bit lighter. Highlights, you know how that works. This, this particular one seems to be a bit magenta and blue, so we can work with the tint and the color temperature up here. And then these wheels are pretty good to add contrast. You can go a bit brighter on this wheel. Make sure you're on wheels and not on log. And then down here, you can make it a bit darker, add a little bit more contrast. And if you want to add a bit more saturation or pull it out, you can do that on these sliders. And as a beginner, I wouldn't really do much more. Just play with the colors down there, shadow highlights a little bit with the gain and the lift, and then you'll get some really nice results render that out and you can really see that with not much editing and not much experience you can actually get some fantastic reels so now we've gone through a lot of different tips but there's still one tip and i think that's a very important one you have to post consistently and the more you post the more you grow since the growth started to slow down i've posted two to three times a day and that has made my account grow again. So while it can be quite exhausting at times and difficult to get a lot of content, I still think it's the most important that you post, post, post. The more you post, the more you will grow. So if you just post once a week, sign off the app and only come back a week after, your growth will be very slow or minimal. Even with just posting once a day, your growth will probably be pretty slow at the moment. So my recommendation would be, if you can, post at least three to four times a day and your growth will pick up significantly.
So let's talk about one of my most successful strategies on Instagram, my lame strategy. Yes, it is lame, but it has grown my account by thousands and thousands of followers. So what is it? I've tested it with a few friends and it definitely works. So if you are having a business account or an influencer account, you can see all the stats on your images, like how many followers you've gotten, for instance. If you don't have a business account, go over and change today because you really want to see your stats if you want to grow your account. So in this stats, I check my images and I just go to the images that have gotten me the most followers over the last year, for instance. I pick the top three, four, five images and I repost them. I know, it sounds a bit lame, posting the same content over and over and over again. But for some reason, the algorithm likes certain images more than others. I have certain major Mitchell cockatoos, for instance, that will just every time I post them, give me continuously nice likes, many comments and a lot of new followers. So I have 10, 15 images that I know whenever I post them, they will go viral. And I have a few videos and reels that do exactly the same. I don't know why it happens like that, but there just seem to be certain images, certain content that goes viral every time you post it. So you might say, but isn't it annoying if you just post the same stuff over and over and over? Yes, it is. But at the same time, you should also consider that at the best of times, maybe 10 to 20, maybe 30% of your own followers are shown your content. So if I have 200,000 followers, only 20,000 people might actually see one of my posts, people that already follow me. So if I repost the same image, let's say two or three months later, first of all, I will have gotten a lot of new followers that have never seen the image. And secondly, it will be shown to a lot of followers that have actually not seen that image the first time I posted it. So by continuously kind of rolling over your most successful content, you're getting more content and you can actually grow a lot faster because the content that has gone viral in the past will go viral essentially every time. I really hope with today's video I could shine some light onto Instagram and how it works and how I still manage to grow my account. And I think the most important thing for you is to not get discouraged. Just grind it out. I often have to force myself to just post an image or two, but I also use it as part of my business. So for me, it's important that I keep growing on Instagram. If you just want to do it for fun, then I wouldn't worry about growth. But if you want to grow, then you actually have to also put in a little bit of work, create reels, post, 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 engage with other people and so on. So let me know what do you think about Instagram? Love it, hate it, don't care? Let me know in the comments. If you want to support the channel, make sure to check out my masterclass down there in the description that will help you to make your images stand out. Give me a thumbs up and share my video because YouTube also has an algorithm that wants to feel special. So liking and sharing the video really helps me because then the algorithm will see that this video was valuable to you and will share it with more people that hopefully also find some value in the videos. Other than that, please make sure to subscribe to the channel. I will see you very soon. Bye.